Thank you for tuning into the Lulberts. This is where libertarians get together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a liberty program. We're the liberty talk show that is not hosted by a left-wing grifter or a narcissistic cult leader. No! Write down our toll-free website. You're going to need it. It's www.lulberts.com. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.lulberts.com. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the RSS feed. How you been? Who are you? (laughs) I have been great. My name is Matt coming out of Austin, Texas. And what a good day. What a good weekend this is already. Yeah, today was a good day for sure. (laughs) I can't even stress like how happy I am about the verdict and how I was actually kind of shocked because the the length of deliberations, I was like, this is going to be a hung jury. Like there's someone holding wait, wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. I think we're burying the lead here a little bit. Okay, sure. <laughs> what trial are we talking about? Because remember, we got to keep things a little evergreen. <laughs> but right. This is okay, important. So... This is important even long term. And we'll get into why. Oh, in that's a, a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, for, you know, the the many g- generations to come, which will be listening to this. Um <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we're, we're talking about the uh, historic Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Uh, it's been over a year in the making, and uh, there's it was wild. I watched almost the entire trial, uh, just had it going in the background while I was working. Again, and... I think we're still bearing the lead. What was the trial about? <laughs> Who was this Kyle Rittenhouse kid? Look, I'm really good at podcasting, all right? <laughs> Well, uh, to be Kyle fair, you didn't do a nationally uh, syndicated talk radio like I have. <clears throat> right, of not course. To, not to toot my own horn, toot toot. Yeah. But. Humble, hashtag humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, so what happened uh, last year during the Summer of Love, which was when we had the massive uh, riots slash protests, but mostly riots uh, related to Black Lives Matter. Uh, one of these riots happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, and this was due to an individual named Jacob Blake, um, who was not dead, uh, but who was shot several times by police. Uh, there was a, a huge uproar about this, um, people believing it was an unjustified shooting. I'm not so sure that it was unjustified in the first place, but it led to riots <laughs> happening in this pretty small town. And as a result, a uh, 17-year-old white supremacist crossed <laughs> state lines with an illegal gun that he uh, did not belong to him, and his mom dropped him off, and he went there explicitly to uh, commit murder, which he did. He murdered uh, two people and disarmed. He crossed state lines. Uh, he drove from Illinois to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now, again, <laughs> he drove from Illinois to Wisconsin. It's not like he was in his front yard and he was approached by a group of individuals who posed an imminent threat to his life. He drove across state lines. Yeah, so. <laughs> that, and, and honestly, to me, that's the that's the worst part is that he crossed state, state lines. Yeah, he's a state cruiser. Yeah, exactly. I mean, th- that there's no crime worse than crossing state lines. Yeah. But in reality, what yeah. actually happened was uh, this young man um, cross. He did cross state lines, but not with a weapon. Uh, he went to a friend's house. He lived right on the border uh, between two states. Uh, crossed the border basically on the second or third day of riots to go and clean up graffiti uh, and to uh, protect local businesses from further getting destroyed. I mean, like one of the, the car lots there had been destroyed the night previous and they torched every single car in the parking lot. And it, if you've seen the uh, photos of it, it looks like like Iraq, like it was like Fallujah yeah. or something in 2004. <laughs> like it's it's crazy. So, it looks like public housing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he and uh, some other locals, um, some of them, I think my, what, at least one of them that he was with was ex-military. Uh, but a lot of them, basically, they got their trusty AR-15s and plate carriers and whatnot. And the idea was to go and basically stand in front of these businesses uh, just as a deterrence to any further violence. Um, throughout the course of the night, he got separated um, by the police from his uh, main group. And 
was then chased by a pedophile who had threatened to murder him earlier in the night. Multiple um, times, I guess. Multiple times. Twice. Uh, this man had also twice been... Twice docu- or documented, I guess, at least in... Right. Uh, but there was and, also people uh, saying that he was doing it to other people as well, so... Yeah, I think he was probably pretty indiscriminate with his uh, his threats, <laughs> um, but he uh, he was all this guy uh, Rosenbaum the 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 as as we discovered only a few short days after the incident, uh, people dug up this guy's um, criminal records, uh, like big time. Uh, child rape, grapist, excuse me, <laughs> grapist. Don't want to get us. Don't want to get the uh, the stream taken down. Um, well, we won't get yeah, it taken he, down. We'll get demonetized. But my demonetized. channel's already been demonetized, so that's why I have to take super chats through stream right. stream yard uh, stream labs. Which, by the way, it makes me keep 100 percent of my tips. So, <laughs> and I don't have to give. So, uh, go, the, so is it Google go over to stream labs? <laughs> YouTube is not our friend anymore. Yeah, well, I'm streaming on it, but that's they have their own little. Uh, super chat system uh, oh okay yeah yeah yeah. so i see so, it right away and everything it just doesn't show up as a super chat in youtube chat oh but it, okay, does, okay. it does show up in my thing so okay is that through it does restream like uh take all the super chats or whatever from does it amalgam amalgamate all of them from the various mm-hmm. sites except for twitter what it does is that it'll take chats like so if someone comments on d live it'll repost it onto the chat in youtube and everywhere else Oh, uh, okay. Twitter is a little bit different because you're responding with tweets. So right. it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. But anyways. Well, at any rate, uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, this uh, kind of just mentally unstable um, serial grapist uh, who had threatened Kyle several times, uh, tried to make good on that threat, uh, chased Kyle into one of the parking lots um, and was intent on killing him and getting his weapon away from him. Kyle was forced to defend himself. Well, how, uh, how do you know what he was thinking if he didn't actually say those words? Well, I don't have a direct metaphysical connection to his mind. Uh, so you're right. Like, honestly, he could have been doing anything. <laughs> but I think I think it's probably a good indication because he screamed, fuck you, and gra- tried to grab the gun. Right. So. And it has been... Uh, so Kyle was forced to defend himself. He shoots Rosenbaum four times in under a second, uh, killing him. And uh, the, the reason that we know that he was reaching for the gun beyond just having it on video, um, he actually had powder burns on his hand from where he had tried to grab uh, to grab the the oh, my God, the barrel. <laughs> I'm having a boomer moment here. <laughs> tried to uh, grab the barrel of the rifle. He tried to grab um, the shoulder thing that went up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the. The there's ground. the shoulder thing that goes up. Uh, <laughs> there's what was the black the, the black thing. What are the others? <laughs> the other possible attachments we've got here. Yeah, but at any rate, uh, this kicked off. Um, basically, all hell broke loose. Uh, there were there were crowds there. He uh, immediately turned around to say, "Okay, I'm running back to the police line." Uh, began running down the street towards the police line. Uh, people were shouting that he shot someone, and a mob then chased him, and uh, three more people tried to kill him, um, and he was forced to defend himself. Again, uh, okay. someone hit him over the head with a rock or something like that, knocking his head off, his hat off. Uh, he well, all tripped. he wanted to do was take his hat, obviously. Right, exactly. Yeah. Which he was, yeah, yeah, which is the proper way to remove someone's <laughs> hat is with a rock from behind. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, that's just, that's science. Um but then uh, another individual uh, tried to basically break his head open with a skateboard yep. uh, while he was on the ground. Huber. And uh, I don't remember that guy's name. Huber. Um, Huber. Yeah, Jacob Huber. Yeah. And uh, Kyle, uh, again, forced to defend himself, uh, shot him in the chest and killed him well, essentially instantly. Well, he actually hit him twice. So when they first threw the rock at him, he was running. He was still running towards mm-hmm. the police line. He actually told... right. Uh, Grosskreutz, it's, it's always harder to pronounce the name, Gage it's, Grosskreutz, yeah. uh, he told Gage Grosskreutz that he was going to the police. He said that he misheard it, but he had it on camera. Mm-hmm. He said that he was going to the police because he just shot somebody. I and, would usually give someone the benefit of the doubt uh, in terms of being like, yeah, they probably just misremembered that or something, yeah. or maybe they didn't hear them clearly. But Grosskreutz, as we'll find out, uh, lied repeatedly about essentially Everything. every aspect of this story. So I don't, I don't even believe him. By the way, every time that I'm talking, I'm, I stop and I turn towards the jury and then I say it and then I look back at you. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> 
so they know so they know that you're lying <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so, so he, he so hit anyway, him on he, the he hit him on the head, or uh, Huber hit him on the head with the skateboard after the rock, and then after, the after that he stumbled and fell because he said he, you know, he just lost lost balance, which mm-hmm. probably means he had a concussion at that point. Yeah. Then Jump Kick Man came in, which I love right. that name. <laughs> I know I love it too. So Jump Kick Man, uh, who has only within the last week been finally identified. Uh, is a man who ran in and saw what was happening, had no idea what was actually happening, and tried to basically, he leapt into the air and tried to stomp on Kyle's head. Uh, Kyle fired at him but missed, and that guy ran away. And then finally, uh, Mr. Grosskreutz, uh, who had been chasing him the entire time, who initially had only been filming, but as soon as other people said, get him, he shot a someone or something him. like that. Yeah, cranium him. He pulled his Glock uh, from the small of his back and which began he said chasing that he, him. Which, by the way, <laughs> he said that he had lost it earlier in the night to right. investigators and to his, uh, I guess he's suing the city for $10 million. <laughs> yeah, which is which is hilarious because he told that to the jury's face. Yeah. And the jury would be the people paying him. <laughs> right. Uh, but he and he also admitted Kyle. that little fact that he had a gun that night. Here we go. Ahead. Yeah, he. Yeah, yeah. He, the inti- so he this this lawsuit. Well, let's let's first describe what what happens to Grosskreutz, yeah. and then we can get into his his civil suit. Arms so spaghetti. Grosskreutz is <laughs> is running up on Kyle, has his phone and his gun in his hand. Kyle shoots Huber, the skateboard man, and then Grosskreutz approaches him. Kyle turns and points his rifle at him, and Grosskreutz puts his hands up and backs off. Kyle lowers his rifle, and then Grosskreutz lunges at him, pointing his gun at Kyle's head, at which point Kyle is once again forced to defend himself, and he shoots and uh, doesn't kill Grosskreutz, but ev- just evaporates, vaporizes his right bicep, which is the hand, the, uh, the arm that was holding the gun. Um, as a result... He Grosskreutz was not able to let go of the handgun, and there's there's video of this. There are like high definition high definition photographs of this, or high resolution rather. Uh, high definition could be 720p. That'd be pretty <laughs> that'd be pretty low. Um, but you can see his his bicep is just completely blown off and gone. And that and it's at that point that the crowd finally gets the idea that hey, maybe we shouldn't try to kill the guy with the AR-15. Uh, <laughs> Kyle then gets up. Brilliant people, by the, the way. What's that? Brilliant people, by the way. Oh, I know. Like the, it's just like real big brain moves here. Uh, so Kyle gets up and he continues running to the police line, and he gets to the police, puts his hands up. He's trying to turn himself in. Walks up to a squad car to say, "Hey, I just shot someone," and the police. M- spray mace at him <laughs> and, really and he's police forced. Work. yeah i mean it was just amazing they're like don't you know there's someone we're, we're responding to shots fired the guy with the rifle with his hands up <laughs> you know and, so and, ridiculous and, and the greatest thing is is during his trial all of these boomers didn't even know how to use a tv <laughs> oh my god it's just like am i was, surrounded by idiots yes dude, yes kyle you are <laughs> i was sitting there like times. basically biting my nails the entire time so i was like they're gonna send him to prison because they don't know how to open pdf <laughs> like this is horrible um so anyway kyle goes back to the uh finds his group tells him what's happened um they he's tried to turn himself in and basically he gets a ride back 20 miles to his hometown immediately tells his mom what happened and they go and turn themselves into the police. Um, from there, this becomes this national, you know, episode where the media immediately jumps on this, says that he's a white supremacist. He's a mass shooter. Uh, he went there with the intent to kill black lives matter protesters. And the police then arrest him. I think it was like the next day. I could be wrong on that, but, um, they arrest him and charge him immediately without doing any sort of investigation. And by this point, there were so many people, independent journalists on the ground, um, and just people who were, you know, rioting, who had been recording, that all of these videos of the entire incident gets put online, and it's clear exactly what happened, that this was clear-cut self-defense from the beginning, 
and they charged him with murder. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> it's it's unreal. Yeah. And the the amount of just blatant lies that have been told about this kid for a year uh, by the corporate press has just been unbelievable. Um, and I don't, they were, it is my sincere belief that they knew, um, oh, exactly without a doubt. what happened. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, all of these videos were up. Some of them were being streamed live. The, live. Yeah. um, Drew uh, Hernandez videos were live. Yeah. They were being streamed live on Twitter and YouTube and all that stuff. So that was instant. So that was the first yeah. shooting. The second shooting was up within like 15 minutes on Twitter. Yeah. And we all saw them and we were all were like, wow, uh, this is not what I was told happen at all. Um, it's obviously it's self-defense. Maybe, maybe there was some information that happened beforehand that, you know, right. that he was provoking these things, but we never got any of that information. We just kept getting told told these lies about things like who are you going to believe me or your lying eyes or your lying eyes. Exactly. Yeah. It's do you believe what you see or do you believe what we tell you? And the whole thing does, does not make sense. If there was an active shooter, let's just say that there or well, he was an active shooter. He was actively in, shooting in the most technical sense. Yeah, yeah, yes. in, in the most like autistic way. If yeah. he was like a mass shooter who was just there to just, you know, unload, unload his, unload his mag. <laughs> To mm -hmm. use a term that a great ghost quotes used to unload his mag yeah. on some on some yeah. protesters, there was ample opportunities for him to do it at the gas or at the car lot. So there was hundreds of people just standing around bashing cars. He could have just unloaded if he wanted to, but that's not what he did. It's not what he did. He he ran towards uh, and uh, he you know he went there, shot someone who was actively pursuing him. He only shot the people who were actively trying to hit him or did hit him. And that was it. And then once everybody backed off and ran off, he went straight to the police and turned himself in. How could you, in good faith, try to say that this person was there just to just to shoot someone? If he was there to just shoot someone, he had plenty of opportunities to get <laughs> to get his kill ratio right. up. But he, he did. He showed remarkable restraint. I don't know if I was put in that same position that I would have done as well as he did, as lawful as he did. Considering all of the circumstances, Dude, getting, hit, getting hit in the head, having extremely good trigger discipline, and he only ever hit people that were hitting him. Right. That was it. He did. He there wasn't even like a ricochet that hit somebody. There wasn't like a bullet going through one person and hitting another person. Even though he was using full, was it steel metal full jacket? Metal ja yeah, steel metal <laughs> jacket. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, that was another part of the trial when they for, for which for basically no AR reason. fourteen. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're talking about the different types of ammunition and what they're capable of, and they were literally wrong about every single detail. Is all these filthy no gunners. Oh my god! It was I was like screaming. <laughs> Mr. Rittenhouse, is it true that a hollow point bullet will explode on impact? It's meant to hit a deer and then explode <laughs> inside of it. I was like, oh my god! Oh my god! Uh, to, to quote the great late philosopher Norm Macdonald, "What are you retarded?" So he <laughs> actually retarded. But what are you Down syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> I love that clip. May, may he rest in peace. Yes. Greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Um, so there's, there's a, there's a lot of things like I want to, I want to, before we really get into a lot of, into the weeds, which we already kind of have, there has been mm -hmm. a lot of people who have gone on Twitter and various other things, even told me personally, I'm not going to name names who were like, mm -hmm. I don't care about this trial. It's all just a waste of time. Well, I agree that it was a waste of time, but not in the way that they're describing not in it. The way that they mean. Yeah. 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 You know, it's all a big distraction, you know, especially from the COVID stuff, which maybe that was the intent of it. <laughs> that may have been, you know, maybe some some intent of it by, you know, maybe some of the news networks. Like, let's stop talking about the COVID mm -hmm. stuff. Everybody hates it. Let's focus on this. Let's just ruin this kid's life <laughs> to, to distract everybody from it for a right. while. But it, it, I guess in the sense that, that it is. But this this trial really kind of opened a lot of people's eyes up. To oh, yeah. prosecut prosecutorial misconduct, police misconduct, yep. um, and media uh, uh, misconduct, 
who weren't aware of it at all. Boomers really love prosecutors for some weird reason. They just love cops. Mm -hmm. and they love prosecutors. And now they, they're getting a they're finally getting a taste of, you know, what happens to everyday people every right. day. And right. they and were this, completely is, unaware of it. This is what prosecutors do. Like the idea that we have of the court system is that you have the defense that is defending, you know, the person who's been accused of whatever. And then you have the prosecutor and together they're supposedly sort of trying to come to the truth of a matter. Mm -hmm. uh, the prosecutor in particular uh, is the, the you would not want to prosecute and you would not you would not want to find someone guilty who was innocent and of course that's not actually what prosecutors do prosecutors a lot of the times are elected officials they are politicians and when they're in court they're not looking for the truth they're looking for convictions they're looking for wins for things that they can put on their essentially put on their resume and say you know look at, look at how many convictions i've got i've got I've put so many people behind bars and the, 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 the screwed up thing is that they, their interest in securing a conviction is much, much stronger than their interest in coming to the truth of what happened in any individual crime. Right. So I and mean, that's, a good prosecutor, I'm sure there's some out there. Um, yeah, they're, not, they're not on the many. ground. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They died a long time ago. Right. Yeah. Um, they've been dead a long time. <laughs> But a good prosecutor would be like, hey, we think this guy is guilty. However, we found some evidence that may contradict the story. We're going to also put it into the the record as well, just so we can hash out what's going on here. Because right. we may be wrong. That's the way a good prosecutor is supposed to handle things. That's not what happened here. We had a prosecutor who, who lied multiple times about the law to the jury. Right. And the judge allowed it for, for reasons I can't understand. Well, I guess he's I biased. Fathom. He's biased yeah. towards Kyle Rittenhouse, obviously. That's why he's letting the prosecution mm -hmm. sit there and say things yeah. like, when you have a gun and they don't, you lose your right to self-defense. It's like, what? Right, which is not, <laughs> I don't care if that's your own personal musings, that's not the law. No, and that's what they're supposed to be charging him on. It's not the law, not his personal ethics, but the law. Right. Uh, what are the, some, some amazing things that were happening there? So first of all, there was a video of Kyle Rittenhouse where he, I guess he posted it on TikTok. I could be wrong, yeah, but he posted it. Yeah. Which by the way, love his name, four doors, more whores. Oh yeah. It was beautiful. And the fact that they brought it up in court and asked him <laughs> about it. Now it's like a meme. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, they asked him, uh, like, okay. So the, in the, in the video, there was a video of him um, sitting in a parking lot with his friend and they were watching a bunch of looters in Chicago. They were asking, uh, watching a bunch of looters loot a CVS. And he said, man, I wish I had my AR-15. And they, they ended up, because he didn't have his gun, um, you know, and he didn't say he was, he wanted to shoot them all. He just said, man, so I wish I had my AR-15. Had he crossed state them. lines at this point? No. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. No, no. Okay. Just want to be sure. But he had, he had the, the video was just like, man, I had my AR-15. After the video ends, he calls the police, which is what you're supposed to do under the law, right? Correct? You're not yeah. supposed to take matters into your own hands. But the prosecution wanted to introduce this evidence to prove that Kyle Rittenhouse has vigilante tendencies mm -hmm. because, and when the judge was like, but this, this is just him musing on a social media video that, you know, he wanted to do something. People make comments like that all the time, but they don't really mean it. Right. Um, he's like, but no, 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 there actually was an action. He actually called the police afterwards. And the judge was like, but that's what he's supposed to do. And that yeah. doesn't show that he's a vigilante. <laughs> it shows that he's responsible, <laughs> the opposite of a vigilante by referring it to, you know, the monopoly on the use of force, which is what right. you're supposed to do under the law. Why? So he was like, I'm not going to admit this is evidence. So during during uh, when Kyle Rittenhouse, which he took the stand, which baffled a lot of lawyers. <laughs> baffled but me. I mean, I would have been like, take the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess le learning the backstory of it, um, there actually was a little bit of a backstory, which was yeah. they, they decided that there was some key information that none of the witnesses had provided that needed to be exposed. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they had also practiced this with a mock jury and a mock prosecutor. Mm -hmm. So they went over every scenario. They did this and it was something that he wanted to do. Like he, he felt that he wanted to tell his story. Mm -hmm. So 
they, you know, they ran through every possible scenario of what, what, what kind of questions would be asked. But during this question line of questioning, he was asked about this evidence, which was not supposed to be admissible as evidence. And this was, <laughs> this was not liked by the, by the judge at all. He excused the jury and he chewed him out. By the way, this was after the prosecution asked Kyle why he was silent up until the day of his court hearing. Right. Which is or was that Kyle or was that someone else that they asked? No, that was Kyle. Okay. And, yeah. And that's they, a gross violation of his Fifth Amendment rights. Right. And they said, which, like, if it happens which, again, the judge said, which, as the judge said, has been basic law in this country for 40 or 50 years. Yeah. And he was astonished that he even brought it up. Yeah. And he was and the, the, the defense was like, this this guy knows better. Like this guy has been a, you know, this guy has been a trial lawyer for, for a long time. He should know better. Yeah. And if it happens again, we're going to ask for a mistrial with prejudice, which means that the case will be dismissed and you could not try him again for those, for those actions under double jeopardy laws. Yeah. So after that happened, then he asked him the question about evidence that was not supposed to be admitted as evidence and <laughs> judge ex just chews him out, screams at him, um, and then, of course, being Littlefinger, <laughs> Binger, Little Binger, mm -hmm. uh, decided Binger he was going to get the prosecutor. Yeah, Binger being the prosecutor, who the other guy, Kraus. Oh, we'll get into Kraus. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. We'll get into <laughs> pizza, pizza attorney. Um, little Binger uh, starts talking back to him, which this has been like a constant thing with the, with the prosecution. They had been constantly talking back to the judge. Mm -hmm. And each time the judge gets... You can see he's very upset about this. Seething. Seething. Yeah. <laughs> Not coping, just seething. Just um, seething. And so he just starts snapping at him. And he's like, not only that, like, not only did you bring this up without without asking me, which is what you're supposed to do in this uh, in any courtroom, like you this is after you violated his Fifth Amendment rights. Like you're you're, <laughs> like you're you right over the line, or maybe you've actually crossed. Actually, I'm not gonna get into it. Mm -hmm. Um, but this sort of thing does happen all the time in non-publicized trials, like all the time. Will the judge right. re rightfully react in the same way to the prosecution if the cameras aren't on? Who knows? And Who knows? it's also just dependent on the judge that you have. Like mm -hmm. this guy, see, he was, I think, exceedingly fair. I think that a little too fair. He, sometimes he was, he was too fair in, in, because he allowed the prosecution to get away with just some absolutely wild, wild stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but imagine having a judge that wasn't this ancient boomer, you know, <laughs> who hadn't been brought up in, you know, like the, the idea of applying the law, you know, as it's written and as it's supposed to be, uh, you know, fair, fairly applied. Uh, if you had some sort of activist judge, I mean, they could have, they could have just put this kid away uh, without, you know, with a, even with a good defense. Yeah. Um, and so I think he was remarkably lucky in the fact that he got the judge that he did. And I think the judge took some really, I think he took some big risks um, with admitting a lot of the evidence, not dismissing the, uh, the trial. He, I think he was basically saying like to himself, reading the jury, knowing that the prosecution was not playing with the jury that they were as equally disgusted by this stuff as he was. I'm thinking, you know, they're going to do the right thing. And if they don't, I have this motion to dismiss with prejudice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that's what he was thinking, but. I he mean, also could have done a direct verdict, too, which, oh yeah. which is where they were like, there's no reasonable. There's no way for a jury to reasonably come to the verdict that they came to. So I'm overriding it. A judge right. can do that. But right. they would have to prove, after the fact, they would have to prove that the evidence was always slighted overwhelmingly in one particular way. So let's right. say that there was, I don't know, someone who assassinated a president in, I don't know, 1963, and there was 53 pieces of evidence <laughs> that pointed towards one particular person and zero uh -huh. evidence pointing in any other direction. <laughs> Not, <laughs> No relevance to any actual case, obviously. Right. This is, I mean, this is completely <laughs> hypothetical. Yeah, this is completely hypothetical. Clearly, it has to, do, it has to be this, I don't know, let's say communist guy, right? Mm -hmm. And all of the evidence is pointing one direction, and the jury goes, nah, actually, we think it's the mob. He could be like, again, to quote the great philosopher Norm MacDonald. Are you retarded? 
<laughs> so he, I know you're not retarded, but what are you, Down syndrome? And then he can be like, okay, Didn't, I, so I have a he's question. guilty. <laughs> Didn't Oswald, like two months prior or something like that, uh, he was in like, he might have been in Cuba or something, but he was at some embassy and said he was going to kill the president or something. It was, there's some weird thing okay. where a couple of months beforehand... If you want to get into JFK, we can. <laughs> I, I, let's, let's not. Let's save that for a different one. Because I actually, I, I haven't looked at the JFK thing since I was in high school. So. Long story <laughs> short, he actually went into the FBI building and <laughs> and threatened and threatened the lives of one of the agents who was who was investigating him Based. because of something, and they didn't follow up on it. <laughs> Had they followed up on it and arrested him, he would have been in jail. Right. <laughs> During the time right, of the president. Which, I mean, <laughs> just goes to show you that the feds were involved. Why wouldn't they? I mean, well, obviously, they, they just actually do destroyed it. that evidence to save face. And it wasn't until yeah. years later that the FBI agent was like, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really fucked I, up. I did a bit of an oopsie. I, I almost got fired for it, but we decided to put it buried under the rug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, where were we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other defense attorney in this, we have Little Binger, which everybody calls him Little Binger because he kind of looks like... Little C Finger from like, Game of Thrones. Yeah, or CIA guy from, from Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Same actor. But I think he more, looks more like a dollar store Gary Oldman. Um, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I, I think he's looking to call Batman. Like if you, Batman's look, you like, look at uh, him playing uh, Commissioner Gordon yeah. in the Batman movies, <laughs> like that's Binger. Yeah, yeah. Except younger and more gay. Which oh, actually, like, no, no, no. The one that looks like Binger the most is when he played the bad guy in Air Force One. Oh, jeez. That is... It's like, it's the oh, haircut. Okay. Like, it's been everything. a while. I saw that in theaters. That was the last time I saw it was when it was in theaters. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on video uh, one time and that was it. <laughs> yeah. It's a great... It's a good movie. It's not one of those like, you have to see it. It's just... It's okay. It's all right. No, it's just a like it's a meh good. 90s action flick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Harrison Ford. Right. Get off my plane. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. Well, you want me to play Indiana Jones again in 10 years? Fuck Oh, my me. God. And then again in 20. <laughs> no, stop. Man. Stop. I know. I can't believe this. It's so bad. Like, every like every franchise from my child. It's like, I, I hate Star Wars now. Like, I, I that was the defining cultural touchstone of my childhood. And I literally just, I hate it. I don't want to ever watch the movies again. Like I have no desire to keep watching the Mandalorian. Like it's just so bad and so tainted by Disney. And they're, they've done that to Indiana Jones. You know, they're going to do it to Ghostbusters ag again. Um, there's just, it's like, just is, let these things be dead, please. Is, is the new Ghostbusters anymore. bad? I haven't heard anything about it yet. I think that, uh, I mean, I, I have a friend who's really excited about it. Um, I'm and cautiously the only he's excited about it is because when he saw the trailer, he was like, it doesn't look like they're going to like insult me as the audience. You yeah. Know? Like it, he's like, that's all I want at this point is for these, if they're going to make something on a franchise that I liked for them to not spit on me as a fan <laughs> of, of the thing I liked. Um, so I think they're getting the message a little bit that people really hate this, what they're doing with all these properties, but, um, it's just, I don't know. I just hate all these things. So I can understand if there was like a side movie that really explored Anakin and what the fuck Padme, their mm -hmm. relationship as like a, like a side movie. It's not, you know, part of the whole movie and be like, Oh, it's going to be like a little cute little rom-com. Okay. That's fine. And I'm fine with like Ghostbusters going like, hey, we're going to do something in the same universe. It's not going to be like the kind of Harold Ramis comedy slash sci-fi thing. It's going to it's going to mm -hmm. go in a little bit more of an action-y kind of, you know, uh, uh, yeah. uh, what's what's the term? Uh, what the fuck? Like it or uh, Stranger Things like that kind of, you know, kids, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. like, OK, that's fine. You're not insulting my intelligence at this point. But Ghostbusters 2016, which which they later renamed because everybody was like going like, why are you making me say 1984 every single time? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Say Ghostbusters, the original. OK, answer the call. I think that's what it is now. Don't insult my intelligence with that thing. But yeah. anyway, yeah. But, I don't know. I, I, I can't, also, I like, can't do Star Wars just has kids, and I just I don't want to see a movie with kids. I just I have no desire to see any of these things. 
I'm like, just make, you know, make something new and interesting and maybe I'll watch it. But uh, at this point, probably not. <laughs> I'll, I'll check it out, but I'm cautiously optimistic because I think they're going somewhere different with it and it's not insulting to the, to, you know, to the film itself. Mm -hmm. If they're doing their own thing and we're like, hey, we're kind of doing our own thing. Sure, it's going to have some comedic elements, but it's going to be more of like an action-y thing. Like, okay, fine. That's fine. As long as we're distinguishing it from, you know, the, the main line or whatever. Um, but there's some things in there where I'm just like, really, you're actually going to show his fungus bulls and mores collection uh, just out of it. I know. It's like, hey, do you remember this thing? <laughs> you know, it's so stupid. Yeah, let's not make it Rogue One. I mean, I like Rogue One. <laughs> I'm not... It's just fan service. Let's just admit that's all it is. It wasn't just fan service. It was, a, a, it was actually a decent prequel that expanded things in a way that made sense, but was also, uh, you know, reverent of the source material. And it was a fun action movie. Fun, yes. Cope and seethe, all right? <laughs> Look, it's fun in the same way Avatar was fun. <laughs> Locked uh, and reported, right? <laughs> it was definitely better than Avatar, but I'm I don't I can't say that you're wrong. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to <laughs> the, the important <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't think that we've so had yeah, an Star episode Wars. I can't watch anymore. Oh, that Wars. important thing. That important thing. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, we got this uh, this awful prosecutor who looks like Gary Oldman um, that started that big tangent. And we've also got this other prosecutor that's on his team that is this just fat piece of shit uh, who was mean and nasty every single time that he spoke. And everybody hated him. Um, he also lied repeatedly. But I, the first time that I saw him is when they were interviewing um, a witness. It was someone who had you know, taking video and uh, photographs. He's just a citizen journalist. Um, and the, when he testified with the defense, he said that uh, the prosecution had asked him to change his original statement. <laughs> and so the prosecution, of course, comes up and so, yeah. uh, lunchbox fat man comes up and he goes, uh, so you remember coming to our office, right? He's like, yeah. And he's like, and you, you remember you just how more nice fat. I was? And I said that I said, I really liked your, uh, your photographs and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, Hold I on. guess you're, you're a little bit of a voice actor. Let me give you some, some voice actor, make him sound fatter. Cause he actually does sound fat. <laughs> he's, 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 his I, voice I is a little get, bit wet. <laughs> <laughs> so you came into our office and you asked us if we were fair to you. Is that correct? Man, I'm yes. hungry. Yeah. Is Jimmy I mean, John's was... open? <laughs> It was so funny because it was like you could tell he was hurt that like he thought this guy was his friend or something. Mm -hmm. And then and then he keeps asking him and he's like, uh, OK, and after we asked you this, uh, we did not ask you to change your statement. Right. And he goes, I, I uh, did. no, you did. You definitely did. <laughs> um, and, and the more was, he prodded about that, the more he prodded, it came off as, hey, we were just being your friend we, we were just being your friend and you seem kind of a little autistic maybe a little bit on the spectrum and you know we were kind of you know nudging you to come towards our direction kind of exploiting your disability there that's the way it came off to me that's the way it yeah. came off to a lot of people and i think that's what came off to the jury and the right. more he, the more he kept pressing the more he was trying to impeach his own by the way this was their witness yeah. every single one of their witness they came into oh, I know. they came into the thing with this whole narrative that he went there with the intent to shoot people and he found an opportunity with somebody who instigated a fight with him and they were uh, and then he just used that to to shoot some people by the end of the trial it was no 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 Kyle actually provocated by pointing a gun because you can tell by like three pixels and yeah, this blown, up, blown thing. up to like three million <laughs> yeah that took twenty hours of work. <laughs> And yeah. software with, that even the expert couldn't explain how it worked to make it look like he was kind of pointing the gun in one particular direction, only if he was left-handed, which he's not. Uh, it, <laughs> so, like he, they kept every 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 single person that they brought on their test their own witnesses were like, no, he threatened us, no, yeah, uh, no, I, I I have an idea of what he was thinking because he said fuck you and grab tried to grab his gun. It was some of the other ones like um, 
Sheravisi, uh, which I think is the best. I don't know why they didn't put him on cross because every single time he's been on cross, like it's almost textbook perfect. Like how you do a yeah. cross examination. Yeah. And Richards, not so much. He wasn't bad. He just wasn't great, which I think right. suggests Sheravisi. So Rich, Richards was the main up. attorney for the defense and Sheravisi was Cheravisi, uh, his kind of his, his backup or whatever. He's the bald guy. And yeah, that guy was excellent. I yeah. mean, he, he delivered a couple of the punches in that trial that I think just sealed it. Yeah, um, one of which was with brought, Gr- Gage Grosskreutz. Brought, uh, Grosskreutz okay. on the stand, Mister uh, Mister Missing His Bicep. Correct. Um, <laughs> think Jervisi goes up and and asks him some questions about exactly what happened, and you know he had already said you know that he was not threatening Kyle and all this other nonsense, and he was afraid for his life, and Kyle just shot him, uh, and Kyle had you know re racked his weapon. Um, not that that would mean anything, uh, to begin with. Uh, but he, but he asks him, he's like, okay, so you approach with your gun in your hand and Kyle points his rifle at you and then you put your hands up and Kyle does not fire. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Then you lunge forward, pointing your gun at him, at his head. Take a step toward advance on him. (laughs) <laughs> it's only then that he pulls the trigger and he goes no <laughs> no he said he said yes he said correct well because no, 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 there's there's at one point he's like you pointed your gun at him and he's like no yeah <laughs> and he's like okay let's try this again he let's, walks let's him through it the pictures and finally gets him to admit that kyle only shot when he pointed his gun at him in self-defense and he said um, correct and right. then they show the Kyle. He looks like he's about to cry because he's just so happy that he just completely destroyed, imploded his own case. Yeah. Not only imploded his own case, but imploded Gage's, uh, which it was over. His that civil thing was, suits against the city. His civil suits yeah. didn't have a chance in hell. But no, they didn't. now they but definitely now they really don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because, so, so here's what he did. After he gets shot, the next day he gets an attorney and he, you know, he makes all these statements to the police that. Uh, oh, I didn't uh, have a gun. I lost that written, gun. Yeah, Rittenhouse, he didn't even say that he didn't have a gun. Uh, he just never mentioned that he had one at all. Well, actually, he to told anyone. an investigator that he dropped his gun. Like he oh, lost okay. his gun before the incident happened. Which but he then, was carrying illegally that night. He, he did not establish that in court. From what like, I, did you do you have a, a concealed carry license? He's like, yes. They're like, was it valid at the time that you were carrying your gun? He said, no, <laughs> well, I thought it was. I thought it was valid. And then, uh, so by he, the way, uh, why yeah, did he, why did you why did you lose your license again? I don't think they asked him this, but he was actually guilty of a robbery. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was he was guilty of robbery. He would had like DUIs and stuff, and he. Uh, but yeah, he decides to sue the city for ten million dollars in damages Brilliant. because he got shot, and. In his case that he makes, he did not tell them that he was carrying a gun at the time. And so all of this is on the record of him finally coming forth and saying that, yeah, I had a gun on me. Yes, I pointed it at the defendant and all this shit. So <laughs> his, his, and he's telling this to the jury, the people who would, as taxpayers, be paying this out to him. I mean, he completely just imploded his own case. And this is a, this is a thing where it's like, uh, Gage Grosskreutz is also... He's one of these, he, he's like a literal communist, um, one of these revolutionary types. He's part of, you know, various kind of Antifa affiliated groups. And you're a part of I, uh, Kenosha, uh, Kenosha's People's Revolution, right? Right. right. Yeah. No, yeah. The, no. The People's Liberation Army. You spoke Kenosha. at their event? Yes. <laughs> and during that Correct. event, you <laughs> rose your fist and shouted, Viva the Revolution? Correct? Correct. Correct. <laughs> but you're not a member. I'm affiliated. Yeah. Okay. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. But, but it, it's My like favorite... these are the kind of people that Antifa are. They, they're really not that smart. No. You know they they have. They're not some sending interesting... their best. <laughs> no, we're, certainly not. Um, but this guy, I think he really thought that he was going to go in there and just get this kid prosecuted, and and he was going to get his big payday, and that it was all going to be in the name of the revolution, and that it was going to be. He had like some sort of fantasy worldview. 
um, that did not come true. <laughs> but my favorite thing, getting your bicep blown off by a 17 year old that you were trying to murder might make you rethink something about your life, no. but apparently it didn't. No, I, by the way, his Twitter account got hacked, which by the way, he was sort of gloating on Twitter about, <laughs> about like, wait till I talk about the, you know, the misfiring. Uh -huh. Oof. That, that that destroyed him too. But my favorite moment... Yeah, the, the misfire that did not happen. Right. Because if there was a misfire... Cannot, it does, yeah, it doesn't... You, no, there wasn't. Yeah, there was no misfire. Okay, so there you... There was no misfire. He did not clear around. It doesn't happen on video. Um, they did not recover an unspent shell. Anything. Like... Yeah. Uh, that, you, that I mean, like you have whole, an... A, what is it called? An AK-15? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I had but, someone I mean, go. This is the thing. It's like we, we we literally like everyone always criticizes Ayn Rand. For, you know, her novels are so unrealistic. Blah blah blah. It's like no, we live in one. Yeah. We literally. This guy's name is basically Gross Crust. Like <laughs> it's, an, it's an Ayn Rand villain name. You know. Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> You're not. Oh, dying. Oh shit. <laughs> You're not wrong at all. But yeah. I think one of my favorite been... moments, my favorite moments was this one. You look like at that point you're moving. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. So with him 30 feet ahead of you running away from you, at that point you pull your firearm and begin to chase him, correct? No. You don't begin to chase him? <laughs> nope. No, I do not. You head in the direction that he's running. Yes? Correct. Well, you just happen to be running in that direction? It has nothing to do with Kyle Rittenhouse running in that direction? No, it does have to do with the defendant running in that direction, yes. Okay, so <laughs> you are trying to chase him down? No. <laughs> I'm to you, Patrick Scott. <laughs> and this Amen. is your ID. Yep. I found this ID in this wallet. And if that's the case, this must be... Your wallet. That makes sense to me. Then take it. It's not my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's exact same energy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they're not sending their best. So yeah, it's so they get they that, lost on that, that charge. Basically, I think sealed sealed the deal for the, the not guilty on that that portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, but the they the prosecution they continued it's like every single day like especially at towards the end of the trial i thought it was going to be that like oh man like we're not going to get to see the judge yell at them again but it was every single day they did something so outrageous that they'd have to you know tell the jury to leave and the, the judge would sit there and chew them out um this and was the all jury, the way up until and the, the end and the jury knows that they're like why are we keep getting kicked out every time this guy gets on the stand right Every single time he must be doing something really bad. <laughs> so the prosecutors, knowing that they essentially have no case at this point, decide to pull this Hail Mary where they get this. Uh, they have this drone footage that no one's seen yet. That is uh, it's a very wide angle. It's from very far away. And they you know, provide this evidence to the state crime lab and they provide it to the defense. A, a low they, res copy of it, which well, they knew at the time yeah, they were giving a low that. res we're copy. To that. Okay. <laughs> so, so they then put this, this, uh, their, their whole case now is going to rest on a still frame from this video that they show in court that they blow up and enhance using some sort of AI algorithm like to, to upscale the image to enhance. Yeah, exactly. Enhance, enhance, enhance. enhance. Um, can you make it clear and can you blow it up <laughs> they they bring this video in and they're they're playing it on and it's super super low re resolution they make the judge watch it and they put it on and the the defense is like what what is this you're you're first of all you're upscaling this super low resolution image you know how do <laughs> how do we know that this is actually doing anything that's accurate is it adding more information um i'm actually saying what they should have said uh, because yes. it's the, 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 this was where like boomers didn't the, understand technology. The boomers did not know how to open PDF here and they really, <laughs> really should have. Cause there was so much shit where, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, upscaling this image. They're like, well, does this add more color to the image? And what they should have said is this generating additional information in the image. And they were saying, oh no, it doesn't. 
It's just using the information that's there. Even though it ends up with a higher pixel count and it's not the same image, um, but they're 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 blowing this up and and when they're watching this video on, in court, they're also playing it on a 4K TV. So they're which, taking a super low resolution image, which is already being you know stretched to fit the dimensions of the TV. But 4K TVs also do their own upscaling yes. uh, on this, and, and it, it annoys the hell out of me because it's a pain in the ass to turn that shit off. Yeah, it's and the judge is sitting there. They're making him watch this. And he's like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. This is just a blur. And they're like, oh, well, you know, we, uh, our version's better. And the defense is like, you're what? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, nothing. I mean, it's just playing wrong. And then the, the defense is kind of like, OK, let's ask him about that. And so they finally, after evidence is closed over the weekend, they get the video footage that the prosecution had, which was substantially higher resolution. We're talking about, I think it was, um, I think the original was like something like, oh God, 360p versus no, 720p? It was, or is it the was two, it's something, it's a really, really weird, it was like 1700 right. by 850 I'm, I'm, or something. It's some weird, weird resolution. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. standard Right, but I mean, like roughly speaking, it's about it's yeah. A, it's, roughly speaking, I would say it was it was roughly high definition, like it was roughly like a 720p image, probably maybe yeah. a little bit higher. And they had something um, along the lines of like a 240. It was like, yeah, it was something. It was like the, it was like it, early YouTube, early early YouTube. Yeah, like 240p basically. And they were essentially the idea that the defense had. They're like, okay, well, they're taking you know, like probably about five or six pixels that are supposed to represent Kyle and blowing that up. And like, that's supposed to play to the jury, whatever, <laughs> not realizing that they were going to have a much higher definition image. And so they basically allowed it in. Um, they find out that this video is not the one that they were given and they start grilling the prosecution about it. And, uh, this is after they've already filed a motion to dismiss based on this this evidence that shouldn't have been uh, shouldn't have been put in, mm -hmm. and they go back and forth in court and they get caught on in just in a straight up lie. I don't know. They're I, saying, I, no, we. I don't know what happened, Your Honor. I, I I sent them a thing and I put it in their Dropbox, but I mean, I have an iPhone. And they probably have Android, and I think that maybe AirDrop uh, converted it uh, to a lower definition and then renamed the file. I know you don't understand this, and I think they're exploiting the fact that you don't understand technology. But basically, like they it, are not it, us. It, uh, it messed up the pixels. And, and uh, it's too complicated. And, you you know, wouldn't understand. Honest mistake. Honest mistake. It's an honest mistake. So you know, it's it should go into evidence. I think <laughs> it should remain. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And so the 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 other one of the other supporting defense attorneys, uh, who wasn't one of the ones who was making oral arguments, but she's sitting there and she's like, I didn't open this on my phone. I opened it from my Gmail account for, on my computer, and this file name that you provided me is different from the one that is in the state's uh, crime Ooh. lab. It's not the same file. It, and there's no way that it would, you know, the, the file name wouldn't change on its own. You had to have done this. And like, no, no, no. Maybe and, and this is when Lunchbox is like, oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe Mr. Binger changed the name. He's like trying to throw Binger under the bus because he knows he's, he's getting, he's basically fucked at this point. And the and he's like no but we should still let this in and the judge is like well okay if we're going to continue talking about this we're going to have to put you under oath and <laughs> they basically go like white as a sheet because they know they will go to jail over this because they're lying and then the lady pops in one more time and she goes actually i just checked the metadata on both files and the low resolution file that you sent to us has a creation date that's 20 minutes uh, 21 minutes later than the creation date of the the file that was in the dropbox the or that, that it was provided to the crime lab. By the way, I think like, I think it was Dark Crypto actually went through some of the videos, or maybe somebody mm -hmm. did it for him and showed him. But he actually showed that, like, look, he actually had Handbrake and like one other video yeah. compression changer he on the laptop on on the laptop that they had to sanitize to give to the jury, which is probably why he was like, "I have a laptop. Yeah, <laughs> I have a laptop. Yeah, I'll clean exactly. it out right now." Yeah, let me let me delete the evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's compl I mean, completely insane. And the other thing is that so I said that, like that video had like a really non-standard video resolution. That was what was provided to the state crime lab was probably also manipulated. Mm -hmm. 
Like you're not going to get some weird, you know, some wacko resolution numbers out of any drone camera. It's going to be, you know, 720p, 1080p, 4K, maybe 1440, something, but it's going to be some standard some standard resolution and it was it was super weird. I know a lot of Chinese, but um, it may have been some cheap Chinese drone. They probably got you know, some of those things to be fair to try to like play devil's advocate a bit it's entirely I, possible this is I'm, I'm not willing to play shit. devil's advocate with these people right, though, because they were they were caught I'm too fair. so many times <laughs> i'm like being the mm-hmm. judge here i'm too fair yeah don't be the judge here these <laughs> these prosecutors are evil they yes. were trying to put a a kid in jail for the rest of his fucking life so based they get on lies and conjecture and just and it was all in the name, basically, of their own careers, mm-hmm. which are over, I think, <laughs> at um, this point. Hmm. I think even if they don't get reelected, which they could, even if they, which, by the way, if I, if, when they come up for reelection, I'm going to donate money to whoever is running against them. Even oh, if yeah. I think they're evil, oh, I don't yeah. care. I'm running. I'm, I don't care. I'm giving money. But I think that they're probably going to get up and end up getting jobs at like uh, CNN or MSNBC as their like legal expert. Um, yeah. Kind of the way that like Fox <laughs> that would be perfect. Kind of... yeah, MSNBC would be perfect too because during jury <laughs> deliberations, yes. MSNBC hired someone to follow the jury. Bus. A journalist and one of their own journalists. Yeah, and to, hide, to, to follow the jury bus. Knew who the guy was. They tried to say, "Oh, he's not one of our reporters." Of course, if he was like, "No, no, no, he is one of your reporters. I've seen him around in other other stories too." Yeah. Yeah. So this this guy is following the jury bus. He's maybe a block or two behind them to try to avoid detection. But he hits a red light, and he's going to lose him. So he runs the red light, and he gets pulled over. <laughs> and so then the judge the next day is like, yeah, we're, we're going to investigate. This is really serious. But in the meantime, MSNBC is not allowed in the court. What are you, retarded? I mean, th- these people should be arrested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they should be arrested. For sure. There and, was uh, jury tampering. There was gro- like gross constitutional violation or violations of the the defendant's cr- constitutional rights. They the prosecutors lied in court multiple times, uh, and the just the, the, this case never should have been brought to trial whatsoever. No, and I mean these these prosecutors are just the lowest of the low, the most evil people on the planet. But I think there was also this kind of thing that the judge had where he was trying to be overly fair because, one, he knew the cameras were on him. Two, he knew that if there was any funny business like a mistrial with prejudice or something like that, that the people that were sitting outside of the court threatening to riot if he didn't get convicted would riot if he did something like that. And he was already – he also should have – he should have sequestered himself, but he didn't because he kept commenting on the news and we're just like, don't don't do that, please – and then and immediately now. following it with like, yeah, one of the blacks, the black. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> shut up. Shut up. And then I knew, I knew this was going to happen. He is so the Asian food. One day they're breaking for lunch. <laughs> yeah. They're breaking for lunch. I was watching the trial and they're like, uh, what time do you want to be back for lunch? And he goes, uh, well, we've already ordered lunch. So, uh, I'd say probably in about 45 minutes, you know, assuming the Asian food gets here, hopefully it's not on one of those ships and in, in, uh, uh, you know, on, on the Pacific. Yeah, which is like and you know, he, at the, that was when the whole fucking uh, the the ports and yeah, is it? there's it, a supply Long chain Beach. crisis yeah. going. There's hundreds of ships sitting outside Long Beach Harbor trying to get in, or the Long Beach port, uh, <laughs> trying to drop off their stuff. He's Current literally shows. commenting on the news, and of course, I, and I tweeted this immediately as soon as it happened. I was like, they're going to call him racist. Oh yeah, they're no, going to call him racist they because we get. Yeah. They're just looking like, for an excuse now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was so funny. It was so funny. Yeah, they went after him, you know, for talking about Asian food. D- am I am I getting canceled because I just said the words Asian food? No, because it's stupid. Okay. <laughs> it's, no one's buying it. Like, the only people that are buying... I have opinions about a lot of the people, a lot of the NPCs that are just kind of parroting stuff. I think there's a good portion of them that don't really believe all of that stuff. I think they, there's some, obviously there's some, but I think a lot of them are just repeating it because they're afraid to, to just come out and say, yeah, I'm, you know, I've voted for Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton or Biden or whatever, but I, I don't see any evidence that shows that Kyle Rittenhouse did anything wrong. There's been a couple, right. 
and I'll name a couple, like even even someone who I think otherwise is is a shitty person that I know him personally. He, he actually mm-hmm. has like a little video on his YouTube channel where he's like, I'm not on the, you know, I'm on the left. I voted for Bernie Sanders. Guy who I used to argue with all the time in, from the uh, Venus Project, his name is VTV. He actually did like mm-hmm. a little video about like going through all the pictures and all the evidence to be like, this guy is completely innocent and he did a good job and it's getting a lot of views and good on him. He finally did yeah. something with his life. But still, there's a lot of, but... F- and he gets a lot of backlash. There's a lot of people who are on the left who are too afraid to just say the truth. So they just kind of parrot the stuff that, you know, sounds kind of reasonable. He crossed state lines. Um, you know, he had an illegal gun. They don't follow the news or they don't follow mm-hmm. the trial. Excuse me. Well, they do follow the news, but they don't follow the trial. So they're just kind of parroting the things that they hear from Young Turks or whatever. But I think there's. There's a good portion of them. But then there's like the true diehard believers. And I've, I've had some exchanges with them back and forth. And as soon as you nail down something like, he, you know, he's, he's not it's not his community. And I'll explain like, no, actually, his dad works there. You know, he, his yeah. best friend lives there. You know, uh, his grandmother lives there. He works there. Like all of it's, these it's things these, that are undeniably true that if they just did a five second people. Google. Yeah. Five second Google search. Well, no. City people have no excuse, especially if you live in New York. A lot of the people who work in New York, and you should you could attest to this because you used to live in that shithole, mm-hmm. live in New Jersey. They cross state lines to go to right. work. Right, to go to work. <laughs> are every you gonna day. are you gonna say that those people like that New York City is they not have their community? No investment in New York City not burning to the ground. Oh God, you have to be insane to believe that. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, you know and. <laughs> It's like, it's so dumb. It is so dumb. Yeah. And the, the, I don't know, the thing that was the worst thing about this trial too was, I mean, there was, it never should have been brought to trial anyway, but it was the, the media coverage of the actual events from the very beginning was nothing but lies. And it was lies in service of, you know, this agenda of, progressivism and anti-racism it's it was like the you can't cathedral criticize, was in you can't criticize was, black lives matter you're exactly. not allowed it's that we had someone show up to a riot that was essentially a state sanctioned riot and almost got killed and defended himself and that is against the rules mm-hmm. And everyone's asking, why was he there? He shouldn't have been there. It's like none of the rioters yeah. should have been there. Nobody should have been there. Nobody should have been there. Because they, like those people were there to burn the place down, which they did. The Kenosha looked like Iraq. It was crazy. Like th- this idea that like, well, if 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 the cause that is is responsible for this, Black Lives Matter, uh, Antifa, whatever it is, if that's something that you know the media establishment and the current regime and the state approves of. Well, then it's your duty to just let them kill you. It's your duty to just let these people beat you to death in the street. And if you don't, so he, you're a racist. What are you, retarded? <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's literally, it's like, so there's some people who are saying like, this was never about Kyle. It's only about, this was about self-defense itself. And it's like, it was both. It really was both because you're looking at a kid who's, you know, 17 years old, really, like, not ready for the circumstances that he found himself in. And they, they, they hate him. And this is like, I, you know me, I don't, I don't give a shit about any of this, this race nonsense, but it's gotten to the point where it can't, it can't really be ignored, is that he is, you know, he was this 17 year old straight white kid with an AR-15. This is like everything that the progressives hate right. in one thing. He embodied all of it. So they did, they hated this kid personally for what he did. But the other part, that's my dog coughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's got the coof. But, he's a coover. Uh, yeah, she's got, she's got a little coof right now going to the vet on Monday. Um, but, but the other part of this was that it was the, sim, the symbolism of this is that someone stood up to these, these maniacs who were burning something down. You know, they, they tried to kill him. He stood, as, he stood up for himself. And he came out on top. And so in that respect, it was about kind of putting self-defense on trial. And they want people to be demoralized and to not believe in 
the the right to self defense. They, it's like they literally they, some of the, some of the takes that are coming out right now too. Like uh, it was um, who's the the football player that always get you know he took a knee and everybody hates him. Oh, Colin of that. Kaepernick. Yeah, Colin Kaepernick. He posted something about this just yesterday that was like uh, this this horrific verdict. It. You know, just shows you uh, I qu- how I quote the system is it. built for. What's that? I said I quote tweeted it. I had to correct myself. I didn't just retweet it like I agree. Right. Yeah. I <laughs> quote tweeted just it. Retweet it. Retweet if you agree. <laughs> yeah. I I, re- I quote tweeted it. And I think I put the the rock. Shut up, bitch. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But it's like they literally are like we have to reform up, the bitch. system. <laughs> <laughs> they're like we this just shows how we have to reform the system uh because we can't let verdicts like this happen it's like reform the system to what to where you can't defend yourself if people are trying to kill you like it's it's completely insane yeah so no i reject that fuck you you need to be shot out of a cannon and into the sun and that's all there is to it yeah end of story so there's there's a couple of takeaways from this i talked about one and that is letting the boomer cons- boomer cons, who, which I consider to be an enemy. I just think that they're right now, they're just kind of like allies in the struggle. But I think once mm-hmm. the struggle is over, they're the next enemy. <laughs> they always <laughs> have been. <laughs> like when anytime I don't they disagree, <laughs> anytime they get power, it's like, all right, at least I'm going to pay less in taxes. Maybe you know they'll ban something I don't like. You know, like they'll try to restrict you know, alcohol sales or something, but whatever, like I'll, I'll deal at with least that. I got the government out of my social security. Right, right, right. But then they come in and be like, Oh, we're going to war with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst part. <laughs> 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 to be fair, like the last Republican we got wasn't, I th- honestly believe that Donald Trump is the best president we've ever had in, in my lifetime, but that's not to say that he's good. He's not, he was uh-huh. just, the bar is so low. <laughs> Well, it's a low bar, but I mean, like he, he, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I criticize Trump for, but it's not really any of the stuff that you know, the left yeah. criticizes him for. It's yeah, like, it's... he did a, there was a, there was a lot of deregulation that went on, uh, where they were just, you know, he was signing executive orders and getting rid of like Obama era yeah. regulations. And like, they, they really, he did, really did some incredible stuff, which is one of the reasons that the economy was doing so well before, uh, before COVID hit. Um, was they were basically just taking a flamethrower to the federal register. Um, but they, they could have like, done I saw better. An article, which I saw, I saw. This was I saw one from, was, from Reason that were like, he's doing a great job. He could do so much more, but he's not going on. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> there was the best headline I ever saw. Was that uh, it was like fact check? Donald Trump promised that for every one regulation they passed, they would remove two. What he actually did was remove eight for every one that he passed. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Fact checked. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But um, don't die. Oh, you, your dog gave you the coof now. That. Yeah, yeah, I got the coof too. Uh, You're dead. Yeah, but I mean, it's like the the, the trial was emblematic of a, a much bigger struggle. And I think that everyone, you know, wh- whatever the verdict ended up being, there was going to be a message sent. And it was either going to be, you are not allowed to defend yourself. And if you do defend yourself, you're going to prison for the rest of your life. Or you do have the right to defend yourself and you do have the right to defend your community. Yeah. And we got the verdict that I think was not only just, but desperately kind of needed and I, th- I do think that it's a message sent to any would-be rioters that, you know, it's not going to be tolerated. Yep. And it, by the way, it's it's it's, it's so I, I have a white pill and I have a very tiny little baby black pill that's not really a black pill. It's more of like a, a black sprinkle mm-hmm. or hundreds of thousands if you're from the UK, just one black hundreds and thousands. So just one. And uh, okay. One. <laughs> Well, um, I'm, I'm not from I'm I'm not from that shithole country, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you you were from another shithole country called New York. <laughs> By the way, welcome to, welcome to Texas. No, no, I'm from California, <laughs> and then I moved to New York, and now I'm a Texan. <laughs> See, at least my transition to Texas was a lot better because it was yeah, like I've, I've lived in multiple shitholes. Yeah, so I went I went from California to Kansas to. Ne- back to California. And then I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot this place sucks. Then I went to Las Vegas, which is basically like we're California, but you know, we could let you have guns and also yeah. blackjack and hookers. 
And then it's stopped being that because of the governor just came in and just destroyed everything using COVID as an excuse. And I was like, mm-hmm. I got to get the fuck out of here. And now I'm in St. Anthony, which I fucking love this place. I can yeah. get margaritas at a drive through. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. I love Texas. I'm never leaving. The only thing that sucks is there's almost nothing open 24 hours. That's that really is annoying. true. That really does suck. There's I mean, it's like it's not even that it's like a lot of restaurants close at 9 p.m. Like, yes. What is this? Like sometimes I, on like a Friday night, I want to go to dinner at nine or at 10. <laughs> yeah. But Whataburger is open 24 hours and it's like, fuck, yeah. is that really the only thing? And it's Jack in the box. Jack in the box closes. What <laughs> kind of backwards ass place is this? I don't know. Everywhere it's, in it, the world every, well, that, it, that it exists. It's 24 hours. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely it's definitely a quirk of Texas that I don't uh, that I don't like. But the 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 other positives so overwhelm everything else that yeah yeah I uh, I can live with it. Yeah yeah, it's great. By the way, I still haven't got my driver's license and card plates done, and it's yeah. been three months. <laughs> Oof. But whatever. I'm just. Gonna... I will say here the the uh, it's not the DMV. It's the DPS uh, Department of Public Safety. They are polite and relatively efficient here. Really? It's nothing like California. It's not it's nothing like New York. Oh, Nevada um, it was actually was... downright pleasant when I went. So the it worst. was like So I I have been to the DMV in LA cuz I lived in Hollywood Hills for a while, 9 months. Worst. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be awesome living in Hollywood Hills. It's not. It's fucking awful. I almost hit Kathy Griffin a few times. I probably could have prevented the whole head <laughs> from happening. Not even choking. <laughs> I almost actually almost ran her over while she was jogging. But anyways, um But yeah, that was a fucking nightmare, but it didn't hold a candle to the quote unquote best DMV in Las Vegas. Holy (laughs) shit. Holy shit. On their light days, right? I always went like, what's the least, the best time to go? Like you would see a line wrapped around the building like it was fucking in and out like two hours before the place opened. Are Mm. you kidding me? And the place is giant, giant. Still, you're going to be in there for at least two hours. Optim- optimal, probably about three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a day. It's like you have to take a day off of work almost. It's it's that kind of an ordeal. It's a mess. So I'm glad. I'm glad. But I, I like yeah. Texas. It's great. But anyways, getting back to what I was trying to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> getting back to what I was trying to say. <laughs> so so the, the big white pill is that I started noticing right away, which... I, like people like Crowder and a lot of these conservative types, which they'll be the enemy as soon as you know they get any kind of power. They were going right off the bat and saying, like, if Rittenhouse gets acquitted, that sends a message to everybody that it's okay to defend yourselves from these, you know, violent rioters. And this yeah. is a good thing. Which that was already there. That was already there. They're just finally getting the message about it because you know it's it's a highly yeah. publicized trial. The black pill is, is that I started noticing a lot of communists saying the same thing, too. I have a feeling that a lot of these people, since you keep seeing like faces of Antifa. I don't know if you've seen Mm -hmm. any of these things. It's like faces of meth. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's like looking at the Urukai from fucking, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings. (laughs) (laughs) It's like faces of meth. (laughs) Really, it's like a lot of them. Because that's literally what it is. Yeah. How many of these people are got convictions that are going to be prevented from getting a gun legally? And how many of these people, these nerdy <coughs> Twitter posters that do most of their activism on Twitter, even know anybody who could get a gun under the table? Probably a very small percentage. Yeah. So I'm very kind of optimistic in, in that fact. I think they're going to be very much ineffective. By the way, this isn't the first time. Like Steven Crowder did like a little undercover sting, which he thought was just going to be a nice little shit post video. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, oh, we're infiltrated Antifa. Like, oh, this is going to be funny. And then it turned out they were like, oh, I have guns in my car right now. Let's go shoot. Yeah. Ben oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, fuck. What did we get yeah. ourselves into? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, so they I were already kind of doing that. But it's still, I, I think I, I don't think we're going to see like straight up shootouts in the streets, which, by the way, it has happened between Antifa and like the Proud Boys and stuff. Uh huh. But it's been really rare, and I don't think it's. I think what's going to very end up small scale. Yeah, you're not going to see like militias fighting each other in the street. Yeah, because one side has gonna... a militia, the other one's going to have sporadic right. people who may have gotten their hands right. on a gun. 
They're gonna have and it's d- not gonna uh, end drug well. addicts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do think that you're gonna see a lot more people. You know, if riots happen, there's gonna be a lot more people showing up uh, to protect places, and I think that that is on its own just gonna deter most of this stuff because they know it will happen. Um, and and that's not to say that like everyone is always gonna be acting in self defense and acting properly and like the the whole thing about riots is that they're just chaos you know and so like it's it's just utter nihilistic destruction and anyone who is trying to tell you otherwise uh is is essentially just covering and supporting evil yeah i mean it there's no way around this yep these people too i mean it's like they spent last year um they knew because they were saying things like, you know, these people whose businesses are getting burned down, they have insurance. They can pay for this. They don't. And of course, that didn't happen. Yeah. It a lot didn't of them happen. were underinsured and especially underinsured for the kind of destruction that they faced. Like there was people, there was articles where it's like Minneapolis, the places that got burned, they're fucked. They're never coming back. Those neighborhoods have been permanently made worse. Mm hmm. Because those people, their insurance didn't even cover the cost of hauling hauling away the rubble of their buildings, and yeah. like, who on earth would ever invest money in these places that have been burned to the ground? I wouldn't. Who? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't do it. No. Especially if it's like, oh, the police are just going to let this happen. Like, are you are you insane? Why would I ever invest in that community now? Yeah. And it's 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 tragic and it's evil. And this whole thing of like property, uh, you know, people's lives are worth, worth more than property and whatnot. It's like people's lives are tied up in their property. Yeah. You know, my life isn't just my pulse. It's not me just drawing breath. There's a lot more to it than that. And what's weird is I see a lot of people who are who like post Sterner memes and they post them like, oh, yeah, I really like Sterner. And then they go. Right afterwards, like, oh, life is more valuable than property. It's, it's like, first of all, I think you need to go back and read Sterner again, because Sterner talks about how you live through your property. Your body is your property. Is your property. I know. And that you ex- you only exist through your <laughs> property and the things that you own and the things that you can keep and right. you know, defend off from, from, you know, from, from evil and from thieves. Like, he talks about this at great mind-numbing length only because he's just kind of you know, making a point about Hegel and how, how autistic he is, but, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but like he goes through great detail to try to explain this to you. And still like they, it just fucking, it's just, just right over their heads. I think the vast majority of people who say they love Sterner never read Sterner. I think the vast majority, yeah, they just, they just see read Sterner and I don't like him. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) By the way, I, I think Michael Ballas put the wrong chapter of Sterner in that book. I really, oh, really? do. Yeah. Cause I heard, <laughs> I haven't uh, even read it. <laughs> so Patrick, I read like two, two parts of it. <laughs> so Patrick Smith, who uh, runs distant who took over, uh, Anarchist, which we've, we've talked about Anarchist and how mm. we're huge fans of Anarchists. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sarcasm actually is a good show now that, he, <laughs> that Jeff Berwick doesn't run it. It has nothing to do with it. Um, mm-hmm. but he he was doing a reading where he was just reading and then commentating in between uh, the readings and he read Sterner and he towards the end of it he was like he he was making things he was talk like Sterner's talking about things which only makes sense if you had read the chapters before or that he clarifies in later chapters in that particular oh. chapter and there was a lot of us who were who have read Sterner was like that was not the good chapter there was a lot of good chapters that yeah. you could just section out and be like this is perfect there's a few that are really bad especially if mm-hmm. you have, have no understanding of Hegel. Cause I didn't, I still don't have any real understanding of Hegel. So there's mm-hmm. portions of the book where I'm just, it just kind of like, I, my eyes just kind of glaze over like, what are you even talking about? Um, but I guess if you have read Hegel and you understand Hegel, it's a good bit of satire to kind of show you how Hegel is wrong. Like, I guess he was really good at that. So I'm told so, I don't want to read Hegel. The, I, I got to stop you right now. There's someone in the chat that said, Jim low key justifying gun control. <laughs> What? That was what? That? I have no idea. Oh no! This is why I don't reach at. <laughs> then someone says based shootouts. Oh, evil like violence is both necessary and inevitable. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> but it, okay, anyway. I'm not gonna look at the chat anymore. 
<laughs> I love the chat. Any, anyone listening to this is, is like <laughs> got mental problems anyway. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who, who just listen to the podcast only, we've actually been streaming the raw format live and then we take it down and then we edit it for the podcast. Uh, so if you want to get super chats in, now would be the time. Uh, you just gave away some free super chats. Thanks for that. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think I think it, that it's good that when the next time we're going to get one of these, you know, shootings that obviously the comp was, you know, in the wrong. And then we find out later, like, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, everything that the media said about the shooting was completely fucking wrong and a lie. Right. Um, like Jacob. Dude, Blake. And this is the so let, let's talk it, about Jacob it, yeah, Blake, for example. So Jacob, Jacob Blake. Blake, Jacob Blake uh, was this he had a restraining order. This, so a lot of people don't and talk reminder, about this. Jacob Blake, the, the reason the Kenosha riot happened was because an individual named Jacob Blake was shot by what the police name several times. <laughs> hmm? What was his name again? I forgot. Already. Jacob Blake. Okay. So Jacob Blake. Just want to make sure everyone knows Jacob Blake. Right. <laughs> so Jacob Blake, um, he was shot in the back seven times by police officers. And if you watch the video, you're going to be like, oh man, that's awful that the cops just shot him in the back. Well, I'm only going to go off this information. Uh, clearly, the cops were in the wrong. But if you actually understand the whole situation that was going on. So first of mm -hmm. all, uh, he was he had a restraining order against him for for rape, for grape, for, for digital grape, which people think like, what did, what did you do? You know, it doesn't mean online. Yeah, it doesn't it means, mean online. It means your fingers because those are digits. Yeah, your yes. digits. So, yeah, he he. Uh, he fingered him. <laughs> yeah, he digitally raped his ex or his baby's mama. Uh, and then he was planning to steal her car with her kids in it and kidnap the kids as well while there was a knife in the car and had been making threats and was threatening to like to beat her up. And she called the police. And when she called the police, she wasn't like my ex or whatever. was. Doing. She was like, Jacob Blake is at my house. And the reason why she said Jacob Blake is because she had called the police many times and they recognized his name. And so they sent right. out squad cars like as fast as they could. So he was about ready to kidnap a kid, bunch of kids with a knife in the car. Did, I think we ended up, he ended up having a knife on him as well um, mm -hmm. and steal a car. And by law, the, the, the cops cannot let him take off with those kids. They cannot right. do it. They so they had to shoot. kidnap someone. Yes. So, that was a just that was a good shoot. I would that's that's the right term for 100%. it. 100 percent It was a good thing. shoot. He didn't even die. No. He's paralyzed. And his his baby mama said afterwards, like he, he deserved way worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All this stuff. All you people defending him are crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this guy was not a good guy by any stretch of the imagination. So he gets shot. And by the way, Huber, yeah. Jacob Huber? Oh, yeah, Huber. was friends with this was guy. Was friends with this guy. So this kind of the caliber. And by the way, he was also guilty of domestic violence as well. He beat the shit out yep. of his, even beat the shit out of the lady who was put on the stand to give a character witness about how great of a kid he was. He I beat mean, the shit out of him. Here's the thing about Kyle is like this kid, not only was he put into like this impossible circumstance and just, I mean, he performed, like you said earlier, I don't think I could have performed as well as he did and as lawful as, as he did. But I mean, the guy is a fucking warrior poet. He shoots the pedo in the groin. That's one of the, where one of the bullets hit. Good. He shoots the domestic abuser through the heart, <laughs> and he shoots the thief in the arm. <laughs> like this is literally poetry. Yes. Oh, it, it gets even more gutter. Uh, where was this this <laughs> thing that I said I pulled up earlier? Oh, that was just so great. Oh, 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 oh. did I pass it? Mm, no. But someone actually did a little bit of numerology, and I thought it was quite oh, really? clever. <laughs> oh, great. If I can pull this up. Uh, doo -doo -doo when was this? I know I posted it yesterday. So it has to be in the food court, which, by the way, I have a Discord. You can join using discord.lulberts.com. Uh, read the rules. And I swear I will ban anybody who refers to Richard Spencer as anything but official CNN commentator Richard B. Spencer. By the way, I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I've, I don't know what happened to it. Did I delete it? Oh, geez. 
anyways. Uh, we can find it later. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it in the, in the description box when this episode comes out tomorrow. I'll post mm-hmm. it. I'll post the meme in the description box, uh, which you can mm-hmm. only see if you go to the website, lulberts.com. So uh, I don't think we have any super chats for today. Um, do you want to plug your stuff? Um, I mean, yeah, you can check out my YouTube channel, T3HSAUCE, The Sauce. Uh, but I am going to be actually making content again soon. But here's the twist. I hate YouTube. So I'm moving over to Odyssey entirely. So Odyssey, my videos will come out there. And then probably uh, four or five days after that, they'll be posted to YouTube. Good. So if you want to see my stuff, go to Odyssey and find my channel. It's the same thing. T3HSAUCE, the yeah. sauce. I think you should follow my, my Odyssey because I post more stuff on Odyssey. Than I do my actual channel now. It's just, I mean, it's it's a honestly, I'm not, I'm not just trying to sell Odyssey because Drew's my friend, um, but it's in my opinion a much better platform. It's very much more like what YouTube used to be. Uh, the uh, the only thing that is kind of holding it back at the moment, uh, in my opinion, is that the technology is not quite as good as YouTube's. You know, YouTube has been around forever and has the Google money and the YouTube money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so technologically, it's just in a better place whereas odyssey is more of a startup um but they're getting better and better uh more good first time i tried to watch a uh, more gooder yeah the first time i tried to watch a, a live stream on it uh it, the, the app just crashed on my phone but now the live streams work and i can oh. watch videos uh it's it's great it's just a better platform and you can get paid there too you don't have to you know rely on youtube taking all your money if you're a streamer or whatever um i love odyssey i hate youtube uh, me too, <laughs> but I do post on here only because that's where everyone's eyeball is, and exactly. I, that's, I always that's try to get them to go at the moment. Go to Odyssey at Jim Jesus at to Sauce. I think you're the Sauce on there, aren't you? Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Do you have a Twitter? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> why would you... I'm just wondering. I'm <laughs> why? Just, why would just you even curious. ask that? <laughs> I'm just curious. I don't know. It's yeah. been, I've been having a great time talking to myself, by the way. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll wrap up here. Worms. Hail Worms. Satan. All that jazz. <laughs> <laughs>